Hey everyone, my name's Natalie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to teach you how to take any image from the internet and make it into an SVG file to use in your Cricut Design Space or Silhouette Machine. Now I will leave a uh, disclosure on that. I want you to make sure that you're not reselling anything that has a copyright protection on it. You just have to really be careful. I don't want anyone to get in trouble. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Inkscape is totally free and you can find it a download for it at inkscape.org. I'll put a uh, link to that in the description of the video here. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to go to Inkscape first. And here's Inkscape. Now, in order to get a SVG file that is going to work well with Cricut Design Space and not be gigantic or teeny tiny to the point you can't see it, you're going to need to change the document properties first before you even pull your image in. So up here in the upper left hand corner where it says file, just click there and scroll down to document properties. It's like the third one from the bottom. And then it's mine on mine, it pulls up over here in this weird area. So I just drag it out where I can see the whole little dialog box. And on the document properties dialog box, you're going to go, it's going to show you this page. Okay, it's going to say general. And then over towards the right hand side, it says display units. Go ahead and change that to inches. Okay. And now down below that, it says page size. Go ahead and change to 8.5 by 11. Now you can go in here because we all know that our crickets will cut images as big as 11.5 by 11.5. Or if you have the longer mat, it'll cut 23 11.5 by 23.5 okay so but I'm just going to work with a smaller image to show you as an example but you can make this any size you want all right now here's where the here's where the biggest the, the most important part is because if you try to design something right now it's going to make it 25.4 times larger or 25.4 times smaller than what your original image is and you want it to stay the ratio one to one. So just go ahead and erase 25.4 and just click one and choose enter. Click enter. Now you're set. Your little box here is where you're going to be working and uh, that's kind of important too because if you save an image that is off over here it's going to save it's going to um, load into your Cricut Design Space Canvas off somewhere and you're going to have to find it. So let's just keep it in this box right here. This box is kind of important. So click File again and choose Import because you're importing your image now that you want to work with. And I've downloaded some vintage Mickey images here. So I'm going to use this one and choose Open. Now, if I use this on anything, it's going to be for personal use only. So, this right here is just for teaching. I just want to kind of teach you how to do some of this stuff. All right. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to change this because right now it's just a regular image. And I want to kind of be able to resize this when I get done. So, I'm going to lock this. Now in Cricut Design Space when you create anything, that lock is usually already on there. And the reason why I say that is because if you have it unlocked like this, you are going to get some cattywampus stuff. It's going to stretch out long, wide, whatever. You don't want that. And so if you lock it, it all sizes. There's no crazy cattywampus stuff. You're going to size it all the height and the width at the same time so it stays pretty true to the image that you first downloaded. Now, with this selected, with your image selected, you're going to go up here to path at the very top of your screen. And then you're going to click third one down, trace bitmap. 
Okay, now these you're going to change these settings as well. And the first thing I do is I unclick stack scans. Unless I'm working with an image that has different colors, like if it's got highs and lows, shadows and highlights and stuff that I kind of want to work with, then I'll go ahead and leave that the way it is. But then also the same goes if you're working with highs and lows and shadows and highlights, you want to leave these colors. But I'm working with a flat just image there. It's just two colors. And then it, this won't let me do one scan. And I think it's because you've got to do one for white and one for black or one for transparent. I don't know. I just know that two is as low as you can go there. And now if you'll click on live preview, you'll see the little image here. And you can move this over too, just like you did the other dialog box. Um, and you can play around with these thresholds. It's usually, it defaults to 450, 650. But I found that on these black and white images, 650 is kind of my magic number. I mean, you can play around with it if you have different kinds of uh, images like like I said before anything with highs and lows highlights and contours and stuff you can play around with that but 650 seems to be the best to work with these black and white ones so now you just click OK it didn't look like anything happened but it sure did we're gonna go ahead and close this and I'm gonna show you just click on your image there right click and drag now you have two images now how do you know which one is the path and which one is the original image? Okay, I'm going to show you. Click one of them. It says select an image to trace. Let's see what this one says. This says image. It should say path. I don't know why it's not saying path. But the one that says image is the original one that you drug that you uh, imported in. So you're going to move that out of the way and you can delete it if you want. That's what I'm going to do. And now, how am I going to get rid of that box? Well, here's how I do it. I'm going to resize it where this is kind of bigger and I can work with it. I can resize it back down later. But right here underneath this little arrow, the arrow with the little arc above it and the little nodes showing, you're going to, that's the, Edit Paths Selection. Now, you're going to choose that. And see how this kind of turns red when I drag my mouse over it? That's how I know that's the image that I wanted. Click it. And you're going to see these little, these are called nodes. We're going to delete those nodes. We can only delete so many at a time, though. Because if I try to go straight across here, it's going to select some of Minnie's little hair bow. Now, how I'm doing that is I'm putting it up here kind of diagonally from the image, and I'm dragging a right clicking my mouse and dragging a box around these nodes. Now, it selected everything in that box that I drew, and then I just click delete, and that deletes them. But it gets kind of crazy looking before you're finished, so just bear with it and keep doing that. Just drag around, even if it's just one or two nodes at a time. You'll eventually get it the way you want it. Oops, gotta click it again. See how it looks really crazy right now, but it's fixing to make sense. And that a little bit right there. Okay. And now you're set. Click off of. It's set to this. Excuse me. Now you can select the selection tool there. Now I can resize it back down. Now there's two ways I can resize. I can do this. We just right click and drag my mouse. Or I know that my little box is 11 and a half inches. So in width, I'm going to go 11.5. And now let's resize. Just put it in the middle of my little box there. And now I just save it to my computer. I'm going to save as. Mickey and Minnie Vintage is how I'm going to save it this time. Okay, and 
save as top, you want to go ahead and save it as a plain SVG. Okay? Close that out. Or not close it, I've minimized it. And now I'm going to go to my Cricut Design Space and I'm going to upload it. I've already uploaded once, but I'm going to show you how that's done. If you have never uploaded one before, just upload image, browse, Mickey and Minnie Vintage SVG. Open that, and there it is. Mickey Mouse. And I always tag it so that it's easy for me to find in Cricut Design Space when I want to look up an image to use. Save it. Select it and put it into the canvas. And see, it's a, it's 11.5 inches wide, just like it was when I created it. So, all right, that's how easy it is. I have another video on uh, how to do uh, uh, text-only SVGs, how to create those as well. So, you can check that out. Um, so, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on my tutorials and stuff if you enjoy these. Um, also, you can find a lot of help with your Cricut Design Space on our group on Facebook. It's called Cricut A to Z for all ages. Y'all go ahead and join up with us. We, we'd love to have you. All right, till next time.